Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning on the sixth Sunday of Easter. Sunday is slowly coming to a close, at least the uh, Easter season, theologically speaking. And we'll be breaking into more of the traditions of the summer, which, of course, is the long season of Pentecost. But uh, it's wonderful to have you all here. As you can tell, there's a lot going on today. The seats are pretty comfortable, aren't they? Yeah, it's... Um, uh, the, uh, the quilts are going to be blessed today, and that's a wonderful ministry that goes on here. Uh, the graduates are going to be blessed as well on their journeys uh, from high school and onward. They'll also receive a quilt today. So we'll have a special blessing for them during the service. Um, and just to grab a couple of other things, there's um, Vacation Bible School. Everyone, please... Uh, Check the insert. I know it's been in the last couple of weeks. So um, there's an application in here. There's information in here. Certainly Becky uh, is the one that you can get in touch with. If um, you have a child or children um, that you would like uh, to enroll in Vacation Bible School, there's also a Luther Crest Camp uh, Day that's described in there as well. Um, and then uh, a couple of other uh, special events that are taking place this May. You've probably noticed there's also a slide for this. There's also some poster boards at each of the doors, but it's the um, All God's Daughters Potluck Spring Brunch. And uh, it's, um, it's an opportunity to um, learn something about the women of Tanzania. Uh, my wife and I have made, uh, I think, seven trips to Tanzania. And uh, I've gotten to know some of the families and people over there rather well. We love it over there. And so she's been asked to speak at this brunch. So uh, if you're interested in learning a little bit about what it's like to be a woman in Tanzania, and I can assure you it's quite different than it is for women here. But um, it's a very different life, very uh, much more difficult life for them. Um, but she'll have... Um, some slides and a nice presentation for you. And then uh, a little bit later on in the month, on the 23rd, uh, we're going to have an informational meeting. And that's because there's been some interest, it's been some discussion about establishing a new mission here at Calvary, which would uh, be in Tanzania. So we're going to find out if uh, what the interest is, what the questions are, what the concerns might be. It's truly an informational meeting. It's meant to be a, a lot of questions and answers about a mission over in Tanzania. And of course, uh, if the interest is there, my wife and I would be taking the first group over there uh, uh, to a, a village called Kipanga in Tanzania. It's really a, a wonderful little place up in the mountains at the end of the road, if you can call it a road. Um, so that's going to be the 23rd at 5.30. Uh, here at, uh, at Calvary, and there'll be a, a little soup lunch or something that, that we'll be serving, and it's just an opportunity to talk about this um, a little further. And maybe if you're interested in taking a trip, I think this is a meeting that you would definitely uh, want to attend. The trip would probably be uh, late spring to early summer of 19, so it'll be just about a year away. It takes some time to plan these things. But um, those are all the announcements that I'm going to uh, bring forward. There's plenty more in the bulletin. Uh, so please take a, a good look and scan through everything carefully. But right now, let's uh, prepare our hearts and minds for our confession and forgiveness. If you please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. 
sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our opening hymn is number 520. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. and grace, let us pray to the Lord, 
Let's join together and pray our prayer of the day. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love your joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. All right, it's time for the children's message. So any kids that want to come forward for a message today can come on up. All right. Good morning, Tommy and Julia. And I see Carla's grandkids are coming too. What's your name, sweetheart? Erilyn and Violet. Erilyn and Violet. Hi, I'm Pastor Cassie. So this is a good question, I think, for Tommy and Julia. Do you do you kids see anything that looks a little different here today? What's different? I know there's quilts everywhere. Isn't that kind of cool? And do you know who made these quilts? some women in our congregation. So if there's any quilters who are here this morning, could you stand up so we can see? I know nobody wants to do it, but please do it. <laughs> so these ladies made these quilts. Cool, huh? Yeah. So what they do is some of them start them at home and some of them come to church and they made all of these quilts and even more in just one year. That's pretty cool, huh? 
Now, do you have any quilts or blankets at your house? What do you do with, with your blankets? You play with them? Yeah. Oh, cool, with your babies? Yeah. What else do you do with your blankets? Do you use one at night? Yeah, to keep you warm. How about if you were outside and wanted to have a picnic, do you think you could use a blanket for the picnic? Yeah, we had one last night. You, you had a, a picnic last night? Oh, did you use a blanket? No. Oh, well, maybe next time, Mom. <laughs> How about if it was raining outside and you didn't have an umbrella, but you had a blanket? Do you no, think don't have an you don't have an umbrella? But if you had a blanket with you and it was raining, do you think that that could keep you dry? And let's say you were in the, the, somewhere and you didn't have a house, but you had to sleep. Do you think you could make a little tent out of your blanket? Yeah. So there's lots of ways that we can use these quilts. And so the quilts that are up here on the communion rail, they are going to go to our graduating seniors. So when you're a 12th grader and you graduate from high school, you kids will get a quilt too. So that way you can remember that you're wrapped in the love of God and of this congregation. And then all the quilts that are on the pews over here, some of them are going to stay close to Purim and some of them are going to go all over the world, but they're going to be useful to people whatever way they need them. But before we can send these quilts, we like to pray over them and ask for God's blessing. Now we ask for God's blessing because we know that God loves us and God loves all people. And so we want these blankets to help people know especially that they are loved by God. So kids, could you stand up and come stand behind the rail with me? And adults, would you put your hand on a quilt that's close to you? And we'll offer a blessing for these quilts. Yep, so you girls can just go ahead and touch a quilt. And will you repeat after me? O oh Lord our God, maker of all things, you have blessed us with so many gifts, and we offer these to you for the sake of our neighbor. We dedicate these quilts to your service, trusting that your love will go wherever they go. Amen. All right, kids, thanks for helping me bless these quilts today. You can head back to your seats, and we'll continue with the reading of Scripture. First reading is from Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. A reading from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out, even on the Gentiles, for they had heard him speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit? just as we have. So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A second reading is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 6, a reading from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit 
is the truth. The word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson for this morning comes to us from the Holy Gospel of St. John, the 15th chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No, greater has, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. So this is my commandment, Jesus says, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now a few chapters earlier in the Gospel of John, after Jesus washes the feet of his disciples, he says to them, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also love one another. So Jesus emphasized his new commandment in our reading this morning. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Except that might hit our ears as a little bit peculiar. Jesus gives us a new commandment to love one another. I mean, isn't the commandment to love and to care for one another as old as time itself? So to look at that, we need to go back to the beginning. Now, I have a Bible story question for you, and I actually want you to answer it, not just think it. So what Bible story begins in the beginning? Yeah, the creation story. Very good. So the creation story in Genesis 1 reveals that God is so great and so powerful that God speaks and it happens, and God spoke the whole world into being, and then God spoke us into being and set us apart as caretakers or stewards of the whole creation. And in this creation story, we hear that we are made in God's very image, and that story begins in the beginning. So in the beginning. I mean, all you have to do is hear that phrase, and then our brains go, the creation story. And we're transported to that story in Genesis. So that story of how God establishes relationship with us, relationship, our relationship with God and with one another, with all of creation. And a little bit later in Genesis, we hear how relationship is broken. And then scripture continues seeing how that broken relationship affects us and all of creation, how all of our relationships are broken. And when we hear that phrase, in the beginning, our brains register all of that. But there's another Bible story that begins in the beginning. And it's the story of Jesus as told by the Gospel of John. So our passage from this morning is lifted from another story that begins in the beginning. And it isn't a coincidence that the Gospel of John starts like this. 
the gospel writer knows that when you hear in the beginning, your brain registers all those things about God, about us, about creation and relationship. And so John wants to reframe that story, saying Jesus, who was present in the beginning, came to dwell with us to redeem the relationships that were broken, those broken relationships we heard about in the beginning. So that brings us back to that question. Is the command to love one another a new command from Jesus or a command from the beginning? And we see that it's, like most things, a yes and a no. So it's a yes. I mean, scripture is full of exhortations and commands to love and to care for one another. So from Deuteronomy, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Another one from Deuteronomy, every year you shall bring out the full tithe of your produce for that year and store it within your towns. The Levites, because they have no allotment or inheritance with you, as well as the resident aliens, the orphans, and the widows in your towns may come and eat their fill. Right? So we care for one another. And from Micah, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? I mean, so that's just three, but there are so many more about love and care for one another, for God, for all of creation. But this command that Jesus gives us, it is also a new command because Jesus flips our sense of what it means to love or how we love upside down. So in the Gospels, you continually see Jesus butting heads with the religious authority because throughout the generations, these faithful people saw that the best way to practice their faith was to very closely follow the commandments, all 613 that you see in the Old Testament. I mean, these included things like who you could eat a meal with and who you could have a friendship with. And then in the Gospels, we see Jesus continually breaking those commandments as he ate with people who were considered unworthy as he had relationships with people who were considered unworthy, and as he stooped down, taking the form of a servant and washing his disciples' feet. So Jesus gives us a new commandment in the sense that he's reframing the way that we live out our faith and how we love one another. So it isn't that Jesus is trying to throw the other commandments away, but he's reframing them for us. So the commands were given to help us love God and love each other. And Jesus says, look to me to see how to do this. So Jesus demonstrates what love looks like. This love looks like relationship, like connection and service. So Jesus' love advocates for the giving of ourselves for the sake of someone else. So through Jesus, we see that love isn't just some sort of warm and fuzzy feeling, but it's a conscious decision to be vulnerable for the sake of someone else. I've heard it said that justice is what love looks like in public. So what does love look like? I think love looks like our quilters spending three to four hours each week assembling quilts that'll be sent with our graduating seniors and also sent around the world for many people that they're never going to meet. Love looks like using our voice and our privilege to advocate for those whose voices are diminished. Love looks like the parents of our seniors that we honor today who might wish that their teen will never grow up and stay at home, but yet they give their love and their blessing to let them go on journeys and ventures unknown. And I think love looks like our seniors who are going on these adventures, both great and small. And if you go right in the fellowship hall on the left, you can see their plans for after graduation. And they're full of futures of caring for creation, for one another, filling all sorts of needs that this world has. And at our second service, we have a baptism. 
And so love looks like those parents, Matt and Mandy Karstens, who are bringing their daughter Penny to the font to declare, Penny, your life is not your own. Your life belongs to God. And we see with Jesus that love looks like a basin and a towel washing the feet of the people that we meet. So love looks like being Jesus' hands and feet to our neighbors and to this world in need. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand. Let's join together and confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray for the witness of the church, for the wholeness of creation, and for all who are in need. Holy God, your voice calls us to worship. Wherever discord bellows within the church, unite us in harmony. Where we lack direction, guide us in singing your song with our unique voices. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Holy One, you hear all our moans and groans. Where lament and the blues resound, send us to listen. Send us to comfort. Send us to build relationships rooted in your justice and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Lord, your blessings and gifts are all around us. You have blessed Penny Karsten today as she's baptized in becoming a child of your own. You have blessed our graduates with the gift of faith and a journey of life ahead of them. And you have blessed so many with the gift of these quilts, not only locally, but around the world. So, Father, be with the Karstens, our graduates, and this congregation as we celebrate these precious gifts that we witness today. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust all our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As a member of God's household, I pray the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's share God's peace. Continue with the morning offering.
Just a note before we move into communion today, while we have blessed our quilts, we have not scotch guarded them. Um, so we are going to serve communion from the floor today in a continuous line um, to make sure we are protecting our quilts for our graduates today. Will you please rise? Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with, the, with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gives himself away for our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup. After he had given thanks, he gave it to all of them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready. You may be seated.
Will you rise as you are able? May these gifts of Jesus' body and blood strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to be seated for our graduation milestone. So we'll invite forward our seniors and their parents. And we, So, yep, come on up. <laughs> so if you just want to stand, maybe right up here close to your quilt. So we celebrate this next step in your lives uh, with the high school graduation milestone. So we encourage our high school seniors and all of us to continue the faith practices of caring conversations, devotions, and service to build rituals and traditions in all of our homes as a way of life. So for these graduates, we encourage these practices to be a part of your lives even when you are away. On this important day, the day when we mark your leaving high school and stepping into new ventures, we ask God's blessing for you and are reminded of a verse from Jeremiah, 29th chapter, verse 11. Jeremiah says, I will bless you with a future filled with home, a future of success, not of suffering. To serve as a reminder as you continue on your faith journey, we have a quilt for each of you to remind you that you are indeed wrapped in God's love and the love of this faith community. So parents, we are going to ask that you wrap your child in their quilt. Parents and the congregation, we ask that you make a commitment to lift up, to talk about, to equip and pray for the ongoing faith journey of these young people. Will you commit to, to this support? If so, answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. So parents, if you would place your hands on the shoulder of your child as we pray together. God of creation, pour out your spirit on these students as they enter a new period of life and faith. Bless these seniors as they begin new ventures as faithful people, hearing your words, responding in thankfulness by proclaiming your love and grace through their words and deeds, and serving all people while doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with God. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's congratulate Mara and Shane. And I'm going to have you stay up here for just one more moment. And congregation, will you please rise? And we're going to offer the blessing of our service. And so this blessing is something that we both give and receive. And so today we are especially mindful of the blessing that we send our high school seniors with. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.